right. Hello. Welcome to the end of week one. This is Redhead Goes Healthy, and I am back on my journey to lose weight, back on my journey to health, fitness, all those good things. I have successfully made it to the end of week one, and I am just proud of myself for committing to this. It was an excellent, excellent week. I felt just really accomplished, and, and I think a lot of that is because I haven't been able to do something consistently uh, for a long time. So the fact that I've done seven days of consistent, good, healthy work feels amazing. Um, in my last video, I said that I was going to try to avoid weighing in and I'm going to really stick to that. And instead I'm trying to measure my success based on the measurements that I'm seeing, um, on my hips and my waist. Um, and hopefully, you know, they go down and I'll tell you my measurements at the end of this video. But then I've also decided that I don't think it's terrible to weigh in and, and I might need some sort of uh, scale validation every so often, but definitely not every day. And that's a me thing. I, I really do feel that the scale actually does mess with me and I, I give it way too much power and I if it's a good number then I, I sometimes think well then I can kind of cheat today if it's a bad number then I think oh well then it nothing nothing is actually working so to kind of compromise with myself um, and with people watching because I know you know watching these videos you want to know does somebody are they actually losing weight based on you know what they're telling you um, and so I've decided to do a weekly weigh-in uh, every three weeks. So I'm, I'm embarking upon a 12-week journey. So on week three, at the end of week three, I will give you guys a weigh-in and I'll, I'll give uh, an update with my weight. But what I'm going to do every week is at least share what my measurements are. Um, so to kind of reflect back on this week, I just to give you an idea of uh, why this week in my head uh, has been a successful week. Um, on Friday, after I made the video, I ended up uh, going to the grocery store. I went to three different grocery stores. It was grocery store shopping day, and I stocked up. I stocked up on all things keto, all things low carb. I am trying to do clean keto, so I'm really trying to avoid sugar alcohol as much as possible. So I stayed away from like the sugar-free candy or no sugar added here. I really want this to be a non-processed version of keto as much as possible. Now, I am a human being and every so often I might really crave like chocolate or, you know, a chocolate covered something. And uh, there's lots of options if you're doing keto if you want something sweet, but it's going to be full of sugar alcohol. For me, the sugar alcohol just makes me feel a little bloated and I just don't feel the best when I'm eating too many sugar alcohols. So I thought at least for this first week, I would just avoid all that. So what I've been doing is keeping, it's gonna look really messy. I'm, I don't have very good handwriting, but I'm keeping a, a log and I think I showed this in the last video, but this sort of fills out what I have been eating. And I'm, I'm trying to also track um, as much as possible what I'm doing exercise wise each day. So on day one, I managed to do a 30 minute, no, I shouldn't say I managed to do a 30 minute jog. When you start keto the first day, I will just say this is the easiest because your body has not gone into ketosis. So you're still feeling pretty normal. So I had been pretty active and that's why I didn't gain a ton of weight this last year, but I've maintained my weight. So I, I managed to do a 30 minute jog on day one, which was great. And I stuck to basics that day. I'm looking at my food log here. I got a rotisserie chicken from Costco, which when you do keto, you have to have a rotisserie chicken from Costco in your refrigerator at all times. Um, so I had some of that. I made a salad with that. Um, I had these little peanut butter packs that I bought. Uh, so I had some of that. I made a taco bowl with ground chicken. I had some kale chips. And then for dessert, I had some cottage cheese um, and some strawberries. So it was actually a pretty good day one. But then day two through four, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I 
I experienced the, the, the keto flu. And I think it's because I was exercising on top of reducing my carbs dramatically. I kind of went into keto like really, really fast. And um, I, I felt, I wrote down, I feel exhausted today. So this is the second day. I also managed to do a 45 minute Peloton ride. But it was really, it was, I could tell, like when, when, again, when you're, when your body's getting into ketosis, at least for me, the workouts suffer. My heart rate goes up, like, and I'll get to a brief story about the heart rate thing in a second. Um, but I can tell that I'm like, I get tired more easily and, and faster, but it doesn't mean that it's not working. It just means that your body is kind of trying to transition into a different fuel source. So that day, same sort of thing. I ended up seeing a friend that day and um, I was kind of stressing me out because we had this brunch plan for a long time. And I remember thinking like, well, I, I want to go see her still and I want to enjoy myself. And this is just keto. So I think I'm allowed to have basic things like that you would have at brunch, no problem. Problem is, is, we wanted to get Bloody Marys and oysters, and I thought oysters had zero carbs, so I was like really excited. And then I looked up, like, how many carbs are in oysters? Oysters have carbs, and and I like I had no idea. So one little stupid little oyster is a uh, is one carb. And so I was like, dang it. So, but I really wanted to like enjoy myself. So I, I limited the number of oysters that I probably would have had had I not been on this diet. So I ended up having three oysters and, and I, I had one Bloody Mary. It lasted three hours, you guys. I was slowly sipping the Bloody Mary. Um, Bloody Mary is obviously not like the best thing for you, but it is mostly tomato juice. I looked that up too. And so I, I just said maybe the Bloody Mary had like eight carbs, right? Like net carbs. So that with the oysters. And then the rest of the day, I just made sure to just really limit my carb intake to make up for that. Um, here's where I decided to increase my carb like limit to 30. So instead of being under 20, which if, there's many different ways to do keto. I just decided I'm gonna try to experiment with going from 20 to 30 and just see how long it takes for my body to be into the ketosis. And I have those, you know, keto urine strips. So that helps you to figure out, you know, is, is your body actually in keto or in ketosis? And by day three, I was in ketosis. So that was fast. Um, that might have been too fast. I'm not going to lie. Normally it takes me four to five days. So I think it's because I dramatically cut the amount of carbs um, that I, I was consuming. I felt the effects of being in ketosis um, just that much more. I also did some like research on like the keto flu. And from what I'm understanding, and I don't think I understood this fully before, the reason people experience the keto flu is because your body is losing a lot of water and also a lot of electrolytes through this process. So one way of kind of combating the keto flu is to just drink more water. So I tried to like, I, I tried to up my water intake. Um, I, I got like some uh, water supplements uh, just to add that back into my system. And I think that helped. So, so from days two to four, I think I experienced like a severe keto flu like symptoms, um, probably like three hours of the day. And the rest of the day, I was pretty energetic. Um, I actually had like more energy in the mornings than I thought I was going to have, super productive. But then by the time like the evening comes, I I'm just kind of like, oh my God, I'm, I'm done with this. Like I'm exhausted and I don't want to be, I'm irritable. Don't be around me. Like it it's actually very hard for me to be around people when I'm starting a diet. And I don't know if others are like that, but I just know myself that well. I, I don't, don't come near me. So the rest of the days, perfect days. I'm recording everything every single day, 20 to 30 carbs. I feel amazing. I'm doing 20 to 30 minutes of cardio a day, sticking to that. Um, I'm also realizing or noticing, and I think this is important for anyone who's considering keto. When you do keto correctly, or when you limit your carb intake, let me just, I'm not a doctor, so like I think I know what I'm talking about, but the truth is I have no idea really what I'm talking about. So always take what people say on YouTube with a grain of salt. Um, what I noticed was around day six, which was two days ago, I was not hungry 
at all. Like I was just not feeling hungry. I wasn't feeling any like cravings. It was just like a, a feeling of like, oh, I don't need food right now. I don't even want food right now. The hardest part of that is, is what do I do now with my time? Like how, how do I fill up my evenings if I'm not just snacking on my couch, watching a movie or a TV show? That started to freak me out. I'm not going to lie. Like I kept thinking to myself, can I actually do this for 12 weeks? Like not have food, not have that as my, basically my dopamine, you know, like I, I just was stuck with my own feelings and, and I couldn't go to food to help me distract myself from my feelings. And I think I'm just gonna, that's going to be a struggle. Like I'm going to be real with everybody. That's going to be probably the biggest struggle of this journey is just shifting the way that I think about how I spend my time with food and shifting my relationship to food is also something that I'm really working on. I, I know that I've got a bit of an eating disorder and it, it always comes out when I try to do things like this, where I'm trying to really, I think about food all the time. I do. And when I'm on keto, I think about food all the time. But there were moments this week where I didn't want to think about the food because I didn't want the food. And I, it, I knew it was unhelpful to think about the food I couldn't have. So what did I think about? I read a book. I, you know, like there was nothing on TV. So what did I do? I just went to bed earlier. So I, I think ultimately these are like what healthy people do, like these things. Um, you know, I, I'm not just mindlessly eating anymore and watching TV. Uh, so there's that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to kind of explain about like my experience being on keto for one week so far, brain fog, even making this video right now. And I, I'm telling myself, do not edit it. You don't edit it. Redhead goes healthy because I don't want to get into the trap of like making edited videos that take me too long to edit. And then I end up just not doing it. So this is like the, the, the best way for me to share information with you all. Um, but the brain fog, I will like forget where I am. Like I will forget what, what was the point of me saying this thing. And I'll just like, there, there are moments when I'm just like this. Nothing's going on. Like I'm not thinking, I'm not contemplating my life. I'm not praying. Like nothing is going on. And that I watched a YouTube video about like the brain is not receiving certain chemicals right now and that's what's going on. But soon, you know, you get, you unlock the potential and you become like this most energy efficient human being. And so I'm waiting for that. But right now I'm just like, oh my gosh, like I can't, I can't do basic tasks anymore. Um, and then final thing that happened that I think is, it, it, it scared me and, and I wanted, uh, I just want to share it. Um, this happened on Tuesday night. I was drinking some alcohol. It was the first time I had alcohol. Like that was the only time that I had alcohol on this, uh, the first week. And it was very little. I think I had the equivalent of, of one, maybe two, um, gin and tonics. And they were, it's diet gin and tonic. I thought I was drinking enough water, but, and I didn't feel, I didn't feel drunk. I didn't feel tipsy. I didn't feel any, like I didn't feel like I, I drank too much, but, I went to bed and at 2 a.m. I woke up, my heart rate was like so fast, like to the point where I was scared. So I got up, I like tried to walk around, I sat up a little bit and, and I was like, hey, just calm down, like deep breaths, but it just kept pumping. And, and I could feel like, I, I, was, I, was, I was very scared. I started to imagine like, it's 2 a.m. Do I call an ambulance? Like, what? what is going on? Like, I don't think it's a heart attack. Like, I don't know what's happening to me. And then I was like, maybe you should drink some water. So I got up and I drank like a whole bottle of water and my heart rate calmed down. So I think what was happening was that I had uh, become dehydrated in a really dramatic way. All it is to say that if you're thinking of doing something like keto, I think it's really important to talk to your doctor, your primary care doctor, um, or to do your own research and to really pay attention to what your body needs and what's good for your body. Uh, I'm giving this a fair shot where, you know, I, I'm going to keep, you know, doing this for the next 11 weeks. 
Um, but I want to make sure that I'm being safe. So if that means I need to like drink more water, then I need to do that. And, and I will do that. Okay. So the results, I, uh, measured myself this morning. And uh, I was very careful to measure myself in a way that wasn't like, okay, suck it in. Like, I'm trying to be very accurate with this. And because otherwise, what's the point? You know, like, otherwise, what's the point? So I started out as a third. I have my numbers right here in front of me. Uh, my waist to start out was 37 inches. And uh, that ended up going down to 36 inches. So a whole inch off my waist. <laughs> And then 48 was my hips, and that also went down a full inch. So I'm like, I'm super excited. Like, I know that there are results that are happening. I am going to keep going, and I love everybody's support uh, on this channel. Um, and please, like, if you're on your own journey, I, I'm trying to find people on YouTube. You know, like, that's the other thing I can do with my free time is find people who are on weight loss journeys. Uh, please comment below. I will follow you. Um, and yeah, so all in all, it's good. It's great. And, um, we got basically, I'll show you my quote book. We've got all this coming up next, right? So every day I pull off one of these bad boys and there's a motivational quote and, uh, I'll see you guys next week.